Hi, Micro Hunter here. And yes, I got another question from from one of my viewers. And uh, the question is as follows. Which type of microscope would you prefer for research? And when I first heard this question, I have to admit, I did not really know what to answer because I actually wanted to respond. It depends on the research that you're doing. Okay, but that's not a very satisfactory answer. So I'm going to, um, after a short intro, I'm going to talk about five points uh, that sets apart research microscopes from the introductory uh, microscopes or um, also from mid-range microscopes. And the reason why I had such a big problem initially answering this question is, is because, um, yeah, there are so many different types of microscopes out there and all they all fulfill a different purpose depending on the type of research that you're doing. I mean, for example, if you want to look primarily at uh, non-stained bacteria, live bacteria, you'd probably go for a phase contrast microscope. If you're working in cell culture, where you're looking at uh, cells, maybe human cells growing in a Petri dish, you need an inverted microscope because you want to put the Petri dish directly on the stage of the microscope and then the objective uh, is at, at the bottom and the light is from the top. It's, these are inverted microscopes. Or folks who are working in the material sciences, they will need microscopes uh, which uh, basically uh, also have uh, so-called epi-illumination, also light coming from the top, but the objective is at the top as well. Um, and so there are a full range of different microscopes, uh, fluorescent microscopes. If you want to uh, do, um, uh, if you want to label some cells with uh, um, fluorescent antibodies and so on, there are lots of different uh, specialized microscopes out there. Um, so initially, I said, "Oh my, I cannot answer this question. It really depends very much on the things that you want to actually observe. If you want to look at uh, small seashells, if you want to do a biodiversity count of small seashells, you're going to use a stereo microscope." Right, so I said, what, am I, "What in the world am I supposed to answer here?" But then, actually, um, I uh, reconsidered, and then when I, I was thinking back, when I was at university myself, uh, where I was actually working with a research microscope, I was kind of asking myself, "Well, what are what are some of these characteristics that these research microscopes had that um, mid-range microscopes or amateur micros microscopes for amateurs?" or children what they don't have because they don't need it, okay? Um, and there are actually five points that I came up with which I want to share you right now and these are the features that I would prefer if I um, basically were to buy a research microscope. Now completely independent um, of the the, the, syst the, 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 the microsco microscopic features and the systems that it has, completely independent of that, there are certain characteristics that all of them have and it is not image quality, okay? So the first uh, point is the following, a research, if I were to uh, buy a good research microscope, I'd make sure that my uh, microscope has eyepieces that have a large eye relief. Now, what does that mean? The eye relief is the distance between the front lens and, and the place where your eye is. And if the distance is very large, then I can still wear put on my glasses and can look through the eyepiece and I'm still able to get a full picture. Okay, um, because I do not want to take my glasses on and off all the time. Um, and because in research, I'd be working many hours uh, behind the microscope. Um, I want a microscope is, which is very ergonomical and which is not tough on my eyes and uh, one which is kind of convenient and comfortable to use also for many hours and eyepieces that have a long eye relief uh, basically will serve that purpose for example these are um, eyepieces that have a long eye relief and uh, um, if for those people who do not wear eyeglasses what you can do is you can simply extend the front part and then you can rest your eyebrows on here uh, because this will adjust uh, will put you to the correct eye relief even without glasses okay so that would be one thing that I'd be looking for and the second thing, uh, research microscopes are large and heavy, very large, very heavy, um, and uh, they are really, they, you cannot move them. As a matter of fact, some research microscopes um, are so large and heavy that they need a, a special table uh, to be placed on, uh, and the table is also uh, has a, a system which is also vibration-free, because the larger and the heavier the microscope is, the less vibrations are there are. That's not only uh, important for some specimens, especially if you want to take videos or pictures, that it's vibration free. But there's another thing, it's less flimsy. If I bump against a large microscope, um, it's not gonna, not, not much is gonna happen. But if I have a very small portable uh, microscope, then it's kind of flimsy to use. It's not as convenient to use. I have to be careful I don't bump against it and, and it's kind of small and, and tiny. So it's again a question of ergonomics um, a little bit. So two points I already covered, right? Large eye relief, large and heavy microscope uh, for use of convenience. And the third thing that I'd look for is, is eyepieces. We're back to, uh, again at the eyepieces. Eyepieces that have a large field of view. 
and uh, wide field eyepieces. So this basically means when you look through it, you, it does not look like, like that you're looking through a tunnel, but actually you can see a larger part of the specimen. And uh, this is also simply uh, more, much more convenient uh, uh, to be used. Um, and uh, simply uh, if you spend many hours uh, on the uh, behind the microscope, then this is something that's uh, much more more comfortable. So a uh, next thing that research microscopes often have um, is, is that they're very modular. And this means that it's easy uh, to exchange parts. Of course, uh, there are certain standards. You can exchange objectives anyway, but the mod modularity even goes beyond that. Um, certain research microscopes allow you to insert filters, for example, in, in the tube of the microscope. Um, it's uh, much easier also to obtain those uh, spare parts and those specialized parts because uh, the company that will provide the microscopes uh, will already have uh, a, a generalized body available and then you can uh, adjust it and adapt it to based on your own needs. And uh, if you need to upgrade it uh, and if you need uh, separate filters or spare parts, um, all you do is, is you contact the company and they will provide you with that. So it is not only the fact that the microscope allows you to be uh, for easy upgradability, but also the parts are available. And this is, of course, something that uh, is not commonly found in, in mid-range microscopes because the target group is different. You don't need all of those specialized parts. Okay, So that's another thing that I look for. And the modularity, another thing is, is sometimes you'll not be the only person using the microscope. But uh, you sometimes it's like this, at least it was like this in my university. In, in, on, in, the, on, the, on the hallway, at the end of the hallway, there was a separate microscopy room and different research groups were using this. And of course, this means that the microscope had to be um, yeah, adaptable and adjustable to the needs of the different research groups. Uh, so you need to have one general purpose light microscope, so to say, that had all of the different features, phase contrast and bright field and dark field and, and camera, of course, and different filters you could insert and all of these things. And it must be easy for the different people who use the microscope to quickly change between the different systems. And uh, that's something that you don't need really um, with uh, lower cost or non-research microscopes because the, the, the use of the microscope is much more limited. Yeah, next uh, point uh, is the following. Um, if I were to look for a research microscope, and now that's beyond the microscope itself, but it is the support that you get. Okay, uh, The reason is the following. In research, uh, when you're using microscopes for research or for quality control and so on, you got to make sure that the microscope operates very reliably. And this means that you have to make sure that if there's a problem with the microscope, maybe the bulb has to be exchanged or some, some, some other issue, then because those microscopes can be quite complex, right? Um, so you all, all you want to do is, is you want to pick up the phone, you want to contact the service company, and uh, within a short time, someone's here to fix the problem for you and to help you out, okay? Because the research is in focus. And so it's not so much the microscope, but it's actually the, the things around it, the support and the service that you can get with the microscope. Um, because um, you do not want to tinker around yourself with uh, a, a complex technical device because these things are really expensive. And often, yeah, you don't have the know-how, okay? Because these are researchers who, have, uh, who are interested in the research question and not in fixing microscopes, right? No, I would just want to say that microscopes generally they don't need a lot of service anyway. But I mean, yes, there have been cases when I was still a, a working at university. They had a there was a problem with a, a illumination system, and the guy came and had to not only exchange the light bulb, but he had to center everything and realign everything. This uh, was a couple of hours of work. Yeah, at the, at the same time, he did some cleaning to remove the dust. Um, so there was a, a, quite a bit of, of service necessary, and because it was a large and heavy microscope, of course, there were more things uh, that had to be uh, yeah, fixed. Um, and, and serviced here. Um, and uh, in research, uh, where you basically have to be efficient and where you simply cannot wait uh, too long because uh, several research groups will be using the, the microscope, yeah, you gotta, this has to be efficient. So it goes beyond the microscope, but more in the context and the service that you're able to get and, and the support that you have. So of course, you probably would like to know now which brands or microscope models um, in include all of these features um, of a research microscope. And that's here, it's getting a little bit tricky because much depends on the individual microscope um, and not so much on the brand in itself. However, one can generally say that the so-called big four microscope manufacturers, which are Olympus, uh, Nikon, Zeiss and Leica, no specific order here, um, they are quite well represented at universities. Um, and in research and one of the reasons is, is because if you need any highly specialized optics or accessories then they are the ones that will provide that. So their target group is uh, the high-end research market so to say and according
worryingly expensive are those microscopes? So I just wanted to give you an example. Um, the lowest, uh, I went actually to one of those microscope manufacturers, uh, those big brands, and I asked them, what is the cheapest microscope that you can offer? the cheapest introductory microscope and the cheapest microscope that they had uh, was around 1000 euros which is 1100 US dollars okay and we're talking here about a very basic microscope uh, without uh, uh, the ability to attach a camera or anything like this um, but uh, yeah it, it's really expensive this should just show you how uh, big the gap uh, in price is here and for this reason um, often it is like this that also lower cost mid-range microscopes are also used in research if they do the job okay so um, here again you have to be a little bit uh, you gotta ask yourself is it really worth it uh, spending so much money um, for a, a high-end large research microscope if something of a lower cost also does the job quite well um, that's something I cannot of course answer um, I would simply say at the very end uh, now that let's not forget what the purpose of microscopy as a hobby is or one of the purposes and that's nature observation um, and uh, you can observe nature quite well also with uh, non-research microscopes of course um, and as a matter of fact, uh, also in the 19th century, for example, I mean, there were lots of great researchers around who uh, really um, brought forward the field of biology a lot and they did not have the microscopes that we have right now, before not. So every introductory microscope that we have nowadays maybe um, was, is already significantly better probably than the uh, early microscopes that the researchers had in the, back in the 19th century, okay? Um, so you see that, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a question of perspective, okay? Um, in any case, um, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always. Leave your comments below, especially if you are working with research microscopes and if there are certain features uh, that you think your microscope has, then yeah, leave your comments below and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.